My name is Arthur Roderick and I'm very happy to introduce myself to you uh, because uh, I have something to share with you today. One of the things that has really got into my mind uh, since God showed me from his word the significance of it is Christian education. And by that I don't just mean Bible studies and Sunday schools. I mean the godly education of boys and girls. An education that is conducted primarily by their parents, where their tutors and those who help them are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ and have a biblical worldview, a knowledge of where they've come from, why they're here and where they're going because that's what our children need, to know who they are, where they've come from, why they're here, and where they're going. I remember reading a book that somebody in a church, in, when we were in Germany as a posting, we went to an American Baptist church and somebody there was teaching us about um, how to raise your children in a biblical way and they gave us a book by somebody called Richard Fugate and at the back of that book, just at the very end, he talked just a tiny bit about homeschooling and I didn't like the idea of, of putting her into somebody else's hands to teach what, what the world basically was going to teach, especially I was concerned about uh, teaching about homosexuality and teaching about evolution. Um, and the separation really from her and the, what would be the influences on her. I much prefer them to be at home than being in a school where we can't see what they're being taught and, and mature as they, as they are at home being home educated and they, you know, they say oh, what lovely children you have and they're well behaved but of course you know they're not always well behaved because mm -hmm. we live in this fleshly body don't we? <laughs> so um, but we do get a lot of positive comments from people. I do feel that, believe that we are accountable yeah. to God for the way that we raise our children. Mm. I think it's worth homeschooling to have the, the godly training of our children, to be able to talk about the Lord with them in the daytime and to have a godly influence upon them rather than an ungodly influence. Um, to give them the Lord's view on things rather than the world's view. Um, to have that open relationship with our children so that they they know what we're like, they know, yeah, they see us as we are and, and, and we can be close and talk to them about just life. Everything. All of a sudden their child's gone, you know, from the house and they're not going to see them possibly until, well, four o'clock maybe, um, you know, later maybe. And if Emma's married, if the Lord wants her to get married and she has children, then I would see want to see her homeschooling as well. So it's not, it can be a generational thing as well. It can affect uh, the next generation, the next generation. I would uh, say, yeah. you know, see what relationship yeah. you can have with your children yeah. if, if you're at home with them all the time and then compare that to what you would have if you were just seeing them before they left for school and then when they got home in the evening and they were tired. And I mean, I was in the army for 22 years. I was trained to be a soldier and I had to go through that training. It was only nine weeks basic training. I mean, we're training our children right through up to grad, you know, when they graduate. Um, but it's, it says, you know, if you train up your children, they won't depart from it, and that's a promise. Mm -hmm. Way back in Egypt, under the darkness of the Pharaoh, with God seeking to establish his own people, wayward though, though they were, he chose these children of Abraham and he set up a race of people to reflect his love, his grace, his plan. Chosen people, that's what it says. God chose them. Now amazingly, when they were trapped in Egypt, was going to be a deliverance but when they were in Egypt at that time when those plagues occurred it tells us there was darkness in the whole land but it says there in Goshen where the children of Israel were 
there was light in all the houses. And I rather think that, that a family are meant to be a lighthouse in a dark place. Remember, Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, yes, Moses, you can go. But he wasn't willing to let the women and the children go. He wanted the next generation. You can go and worship in the wilderness for a little while, Moses. After a few plagues had changed his mind. But the fact is Moses in the end had to challenge him that they would go. And the little ones would go with them. And I tell you, the challenge in the world today is to preserve the family and then to keep the children in that environment of worship and not to let Pharaoh keep the children in Egypt. Can you imagine? There they are. God's guiding them in the wilderness, right? And the school bus turns up. <laughs> they all jump in and they all go back to Cairo for education. Ridiculous thought, isn't it? But really, that's what happens with so many families today. They've understood that they're meant to be different, but then, five days a week, they bust their children back into the world. It's not the plan. We're childhood sweethearts, if you like. We got we met really young through church. We got married, and Noah came along straight away. He's our oldest. We had Levi and Ezra, and then we had a bit of a gap. And I was, I admit to you, I was desperate for a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> so Eden's a year old. She was a year. Growing up, you always felt that all these homeschooling families, and I know I'm generalising, were maybe a little bit different. If you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> um, but as we grew up and matured, you could see that actually the yeah. differences in the children were actually something that you would desire for your own children. I think when we were, um, we've been praying about um, doing homeschooling um, for a while, and I, I know um, about a year previous, um, I was definitely, there's no way I'm going to homeschool. I just, I couldn't do it. I've always said that I couldn't do it. I haven't got the patience. Um, to do that um, with the boys. I was exposed to homeschooling quite a bit, a number of times, like the materials and everything, and I kind of thought, oh yeah, that's nice, that's nice, but you know, didn't do anything about it. But And I think it took that kind of year of praying what we should do and um, visiting Christian schools and, and talking to different people that actually I just really felt that God was changing my heart about it and, and thinking, yeah, this is, this is right for the family. It's so amazing to have schooling that is completely underpinned with scripture and um, and God that you can bring that into everyday life and definitely I think for me it was just a change of heart and a peace that this was the right path for us to take um, and one of the verses that come when I was reading through the material before we made the final decision um, the verse that comes up um, about training your child in the way he should go um, that kept coming up as well so um, my middle son Levi, he was reading a book and that was one of the verses and he was like, Show them, Mummy, there's that verse and um, so different things, like definitely that like God was speaking um, and just changing my heart. So obviously you bring your family in to your own home and you've it's just you guys, which is obviously the way that the Lord intended it, the way God intended families to be together. That is a massive testimony. How the I think the biggest testimony of all is your family. Because like the Bible is so much based on families when he put Adam and Eve together and created that family. I'm not sure if this is correct, but I think it is. The only, the only thing that you can take to heaven is your kids. It's so lovely to be able to have Steve at home, coming home and, and sitting around the tea table and having tea together. And we just really um, realised actually there's so little of a family being together these days, um, especially in this area. Lots of dads work in um, London and they travel and they're often not about till late in the evening. It feels, you feel so much closer as a family um, because it is it is all consuming. You are together all the time. I feel I'm, I'm with the boys constantly, um, but it's, it's a lovely all together. You, you do, you just move around as a family unit. Whereas before I would be busy off doing the shopping or cleaning while they're at school. Um, but we do everything together now and it is a, it's really lovely. Um, 
as brothers, they definitely are closer. They've, um, they're getting on much better than they were. Um, they, they just really rely on each other. Our youngest son, Ezra, um, one of our friends overheard him talking to a little boy who'd ha asked him the question, um, where do you go to school? And he said, oh, I, I, I homeschool. And the little boy said, oh, so what do you do then? And he said, oh, I get to be with mummy all the time. God has given me the patience I've needed, the strength I've needed, and and I think def I feel that as a family we've been blessed making that decision. Um, so I, I would say to anyone thinking of um, doing homeschooling that um, God will just bless you for making that decision, um, and that you will feel blessed by having your children um, around you and by seeing them grow up. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then the next verse, verse 29 says, teaching them all things that I have commanded you. So the, the, the purpose of the Great Commission, as we call it, is not only to get people to find the Lord Jesus Christ, but also to teach them the truths of God, the Word of God. Now, I like to tie the New Testament Great Commission with the Old Testament Great Commandment in Deuteronomy 6. Thou shalt teach these things diligently to your children, it says in Deuteronomy 6. What things? Well, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And why do I call that the great commandment? Because Jesus called it the great commandment. When the young man came to him, which is the great commandment? You see, that the Lord Jesus understood that the principles of the Old Testament that refer to family are not obsoleted by the New Testament. It's still important. I'm not saying we're under the law and now not under grace. I'm saying what God designed right back in the Garden of Eden, family is something that is vital to reflect God's ultimate supreme um, creative act to make men and women in his own image. And so men and women made in his own image, as the Bible tells us in Genesis 1, 26. Actually, if you move it till today, well, there's a man, there's a woman, they're raised together of the grace of life, they're married and they have children. That must be the biggest picture of what God is like. A mother, a father, a leader, the Lord Jesus Christ in his humanity, a son, a relationship, a family. The picture is so profound. This, this little uh, man on planet Earth, um, husband and wife and children, they are one of the greatest reflections of God and his truth if, if they live according to his way. The Christian life is one of dependence on God and God wouldn't ask us to do something unless he helped us to do it. He wouldn't lead us to some place and then drop us. That's not God. So the big word we haven't mentioned to do with true godly education, which is absolutely vital, which if you take this out of it, it's all just talk and that's faith because it says without faith it is impossible to please God and so what we've got to communicate to people to encourage them is to preach about God because if they understand about God his nature his character his long-suffering his mercy his power, his great salvation. If, if, if we're communicating that to people and we say, and this same God that we've just described to you expects you to give your children a godly education, 
then he'll help them to do it and they'll believe that he'll help them. See, I preached once at, at, at Maranatha at, at our church, which was called Maranatha then, and one, one girl, young lady came straight up to me afterwards because she got the message and she was a single mum without much resources. And um, she said, well, I've got to do it, haven't I? Now, I wish everybody would respond like that. But something happened in her mind because the word that was given was mixed with faith. And so that lady who's part of our church fellowship and we've helped her to a limited degree, from that point on, her daughter's had a godly education because she had faith to act upon what God had said. So the best way to help people is to preach the word and encourage people to have faith in God, even in the matter of family and bringing up their children.